We're glad that uh, you're with us today. If you're visiting, we always have <clears throat> visitors every week. We just want you to know that if you want to sit together with your kids here or go back to Children's Church and they can go back there, we're pretty laid back here. <clears throat> we want you to know that. And so uh, whichever way you'd like to do, we're just glad that you're with us today. And uh, if you have your Bibles, I want you to turn to Matthew. Matthew in chapter 11. Matthew chapter 11. <clears throat> Let's pray. Father, as I seem to prepare this week and last night and just so much that goes on, I thank you, Lord, that, Lord, one of the things you know, I, it's on my heart that every week, Lord, you know that there is a uniqueness to this service. There is, this group of people will never have <clears throat> really the same week, every week, each and every hour. There'll be somebody here different. So, Lord, you know my heart, whatever is on someone's mind, on their heart today, Lord, will you let them know whatever burden they have, whatever struggle they have, Jesus, may they see you, may you take it from them today. Lord, we'll be careful to give you the praise, in Jesus' name, amen. Well, the message today is uh, it's called Lighten Up. So... Uh, I want to ask you a question, you know, when things weigh down. <clears throat> I, want, I want you to raise your hand with this. We usually don't do that. But how many of you have someone in your life, coworker, family, friend, whatever, someone in your life, used to be whatever, uh, that doesn't like you? Would you raise your hand? Is there anybody? Oh, come on. There's more than that here. I can raise both my hands. <laughs> Gee. <laughs> Some of you are lying and we're in church. <laughs> All right. You know, like, there's a, isn't, if, you're, if we're honest with each other, isn't there, there's somewhat, there's a heaviness to society today. There, there's a heaviness, I think, in our life and whether what we see in politics or what we see going on with Russia or what we see going on with morality or what you're facing with personally that no one else knows about that you've been dealing with with a certain person or, or your finances. I, I don't know what it might be, but I know there's a, <clears throat> excuse me, there's a heaviness that we seem to, to carry with us, that, that we carry around with us. And if we're not careful, uh, you're carrying a lot more than what you realize. Let me give you an example. <clears throat> you know, most of you know that Alexis Soto's daughter just had a, a, a child and just so thankful for that and being a grandpa again and a whole thing. But what, what is amazing to me <clears throat> throughout all this is to watch the process and to see, you know, that baby grow and, and, and Alexis gain. I was off by one pound. I said she was going to gain 23. She gained 24. So anyways. And she can't talk to me after service day because she's not here. So I can say anything I want to about her. <laughs> you know how my girls always get on me. Okay. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> totally off the topic. I don't even know what I went there for. Anyways. But they have these classes now. I didn't do that because it was too old older for that, but if you go through the childbirth classes now, they have the, the guys, if they're in there with their wives and so forth, they have this, I don't know if it's called a baby belt or whatever it is, that, you know, they put the weight of when it's close to the, the woman giving birth and they strap it on a guy and he's got to walk around with, you know, and he's amazed how heavy that is, right? Now, same thing with a woman, don't get me wrong. I, I said women are a lot smarter than us guys, and I know that, and, and they, everything they do, so you know how I feel. But anyways, there's a process that goes along that is they go from two months to four months to six months, eight months. There's a process. She feels it. it it's hurt, but it's been there long enough to where it, it's there, but there's been a process to it. What, what you're at today, you don't realize some of the things that you're feeling that you're, that's so heavy on you, <clears throat> it's a lot. But because it's been a process, you, you don't feel it like you should. I, I want you to know that there's a lot that many of you are carrying that you don't have to. And we have to make that decision today or whenever, as a Christian, 
are you going to stay like that? Am I going to stay like that? That person that, that I know that I'll never be able to please and think somehow that they're going to change someday? They're probably not. Or that person in your past, whoever it may be. And you're thinking all the things that you could do maybe to please them. Isn't it amazing as you get older? You know when you were in, were in high school, you know, you just, you just want to please and you just want to have all the friends that you can have. And then you want to please everybody and you get down when someone doesn't like you and then you get in college, change. By the time you're in your 50s, you just really don't care who likes you or not anymore. And then, I mean, you just kind of got in a place like, hey, all right, whatever. It's amazing how things change like that. But we still have situations and people that that have weighed us down, your finances, people, whatever it might be. So I want you to think about a person. I want you to think about your situation. I want you to think wherever it is, it's weighing you down. And maybe you might not think it's there as much, but have that picture of a woman as she grows to have a baby. It, you've been dealing it with her for a while. So it's a heavy weight on you. And Jesus wants you to have joy every day in your life. You know, our life goes by so fast. And he wants you to enjoy today. So in Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 through 30, Jesus is speaking to you. These are his words today. Listen exactly what he says to you. Come to me, all you who are laboring or heavy laden, and I, and I, meaning Jesus, will give, I have to work for it, will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle, lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your soul. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. I love what it says in the Message Bible. I always share with you, if you, if you have a Message Bible, it's great. You can use it as a, a it's almost like a, a commentary of the Bible to me. It flows the way it flows. And in the Message Bible, it says, Jesus wants to teach you his unforced rhythm of grace on how to live. I love that. He wants to teach you a way to live that you have a grace that there's going to be a joy no matter what you hear, the phone call, no matter what happens in your life, that, that you're going to be able to say, you know what, I'm, uh, through Jesus I'm going to be able to deal with this. And I'm going to look at life and people in a different way because I'm able now to go. So this is the first thing I want you to understand that you have to go and bring you, yourself. He says, come to me. And guess what he does? He says, I'm going to give you a way to live. I'm going to give you joy no matter what you get hit with from other people or situations or circumstances, someone in your past, someone you used to be married to. I don't know what, an adult child that's still, you're still having problems. I don't know what it is, but I want you to be free today. I want you to have joy today. And what the Lord says is he gives it to us. You first have to take it to him. He says, come to you. And guess what he says? I will give you of myself. He is rest. About, I, I've been in ministry about 36 years. And about 35 years ago, I was only a year. I was, I was new in ministry. And uh, you go back that far, my hair, hair was kind of long and everything. And uh, I was only on a staff work with my dad. My father was a pastor, and I, and I never thought I'd be in ministry, but by the Lord's grace, I ended up in ministry. And so my hair was kind of long, and I was on a staff here. Well, there was something going on, I can't really even remember at this time, but my dad taught me an incredible lesson. And, and that's why even 35 years later, I'm bringing it to you today that uh, he and I, there was something going on, and so his picture, our picture was in the paper. Of course, my hair was kind of long. So, he, we're at the, at the church, and he says, uh, he says, hey, Dow, can you come in here for a minute? It was off. You know, my dad doesn't do that too often, you know, so it, it, it's like, you know, when you're going to be spanked, you know, as a kid. You know, you just, you know, you know that feeling, right? Anyways, so, <laughs> I thought, man, what is going on? So, he goes, here, I want to show you something. So the article in the paper, someone had cut it out, wrote on it, sent it back to my father, didn't put his name on it, whatever, and just wrote all around me, how dare could you have him working for you with his hair looking like that, and I can't believe it, did it, did it, and it just went on and on and on. And my dad says, hey, I want, I want you to see this. So I looked there, and then he grabbed it from me, 
he laughed, and he threw it in the trash. Now, what did he teach me? He taught me something very valuable. And something very valuable that that wasn't his to be concerned about. That had nothing to do with me or him. That person had their own set of problems. That person had something that they had to deal with. Whatever it might be. But what he had taught me was that he had learned how to live and not miss the joy of our salvation. He had learned no matter what someone is going to say to you or me this week, no matter what you hear or whatever, it is amazing the, the pressure, again, that we live. Isn't it unbelievable that you can be sitting in a light? And I was sitting in a light just the other day and I wasn't texting or anything. I was just sitting there and I looked down at something and the light turned green. It wasn't one second. Ah, the person behind me. Now, I give people at least two seconds, okay? But, but it was like, why? You know, it was just like, why? We are so, isn't it unbelievable how you picture society that we get in traffic? It's, it's unbelievable. That's our society today. Everybody is so stressed. Got to get here. Got to get there. Got to tech. Got to do this. Got to get, we just got to, no, no, no. We got to get there. We got to get it done. We gotta, and then we got to get to the next thing. The Lord is telling you today, he wants to teach you not to be like everybody else is happening or because you will be just as stressed as they are. So the first thing that I want you to know today is you got to take it to him. Question. So have you? You say, Dallas, yeah, I have. All right. Here it is, then do it again. You gotta do it again and again. Because some of these things, you know what, you've been dealing with a long time, it's not gonna get over in just one time going to the Lord. He wants to teach you his unforced, teach you his unforced rhythm of grace. He wants to teach us that. We gotta go to him. Second thing I want you to look at today, I want you to look still in Matthew and we're going to build on this. Matthew chapter, Matthew chapter 6 and verses 31 through 34. Matthew 6, 31 through 34. Here it is. Therefore, Jesus again speaking to you and me today. Therefore, do not worry, saying, what shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For after all these things the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. You know, he knows exactly what you're going through. He knows exactly what you're going through today. It's amazing. The Lord knows your heart. He knows where you're at, and this is what he said. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. He continues on and he says, therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Do you ever have something that was really a burden to you? I mean, really, really a, a, a burden to you? You know, I, I want to really be really, really transparent today. And you know how I am that, that I, I, I want you to hear me from where I'm coming from. And sometimes I hedge on that. But I just feel sometimes people are going through this is really a lot. And I want you to know that the Lord will do it in an amazing way. So for about a year and a half leading up to my divorce that I was going through, all I could think about, and it was being prolonged and prolonged and everything. And you won't get into what all went on. It was really bad. And I thought... I was so, it was on my mind every day what was going to happen. And so my mom's dying. I'm on, a, on the phone with the divorce attorney. We had to postpone the trial the day, or the date or whatever because she did die that Friday I was supposed to be. Had to fly down to Florida for it. And if it wasn't settled in mediation, I was going to have to come back and fly the next week. All this time for a year and a half and every month getting something else from the attorney and the other attorney and the whole thing going on, it was just too much. It was just a lot of pressure. Pressure, 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 pressure. You have faced the same thing, I know, in many ways. And the way it all turned out, which I won't go into, but I want to tell you when I went into mediation, what the Lord did was truly a miracle. And within 20 minutes, 
everything I was so worried about the last two years vanished. It was, I, I, I can't begin, I can't go into all, but it was truly a miracle what the Lord did. But I want you to know that <clears throat> for you today, I wasted a lot of, a lot of time. I wasted a lot of time in my mind. I could be somewhere, I could be with people, and I couldn't focus on those people. I couldn't focus on the relationships because that's all I was thinking about. What Jesus wants you to know today, whatever it is that you're facing, he wants you to say, okay, once you go to him, then I want you to do something. I want you to seek me. In other words, he wants you to see him and not your problem. That's what it means to seek Jesus. He's going to walk with you this whole way. Life goes by too fast. Something is going to come at you tomorrow or the next day. I don't know what it is. And the, and the devil has one goal for you right now for tomorrow, and that is to steal your joy. He can't take your soul. As a Christian, you're going to heaven. So he wants to make you miserable so you can't help somebody else that's going through maybe what you're going through. And if you had the joy of the Lord, which is the joy of the Lord is my strength. If you're able to say, Lord, I know you, this is what we do. I know you've got this. I know your work is, I don't understand it. I don't know why I've had to face this. I don't know what is going on. And, and you fill in a blank for yourself. But I know this, when Jesus says, come to me, I'm gonna give you my rest. It's a rest you can't experience in this world. And he gives it to you. Then he says, I want you to walk with me. Seek me. Spend time with me. Open, open the word. I, I tell you this every week. I challenge all of you. Five minutes a day, whether it's this or listening to a podcast or someone that you hear on, on the radio, just listen. Let the word speak to you. And as you walk with him, all those problems will still be there. But guess what? You're reminded they're not your problem anymore. You are a child of God, and he's got it handled. But if we don't, we're gonna get caught up, and we're not gonna see, and before you know it, you'll do what many people have said. Someone who works in hospice, they would interview people over the years that were close to passing away. And they said, <clears throat> would interview them Tell me about what you think would, is your greatest regret in life. And they said, just all of them more than anything else said this one thing. That I let other people get to me and I didn't do what I thought I just should have done. See, what I want you to do today, I want you to do and be with the Lord and experience joy with your family. I, I want you to, whether it's a work situation, you got a difficult boss or whatever it might be, I want you to know that the Lord is with you. He sees it, he's working, and as long as you say, Lord, I know you got this handled, I'm gonna still walk with you, you're gonna give me rest in the middle of this, and you got this handled. I wish some of my life away. I don't want you to do that. I want you to know the Lord, in the midst of your trial, he will give you joy. I know it's hard to believe maybe right now, but I want you to know when you start to believe that and you go to Jesus and you believe who he is, nothing to do with the religion, everything to do with the relationship that you have with him, that he will sit with you, he will give you the love and the joy that you need and it's unbelievable when you see in a matter, it might be years go by and then all of a sudden the Lord does it and it's unbelievable. Why? Because you're with him. Let's close with this last verse. Romans chapter 15, Romans chapter 15, and verse 13. Romans chapter 15, and verse 13. Now may the God of hope, ah, it's amazing how the Lord, let's just stop from here how it says that, Lord telling us. May the God of hope, the God of hope, you know people who've given up? You know people who don't have hope? You know what's happened? They have believed a lie. They believed the lie of the devil. See, because the Bible says, God's word, that the devil is the father of lies. Every lie in this world has been birthed by him. 
and see when, when, when it keeps going, when he keeps coming at you in your mind, it's not going to work out. That'll never be fixed. You'll always have this problem. Every day, over and over and over and over again. What do we have a tendency to do if we're not careful? We give up hope because we have believed the lie. Everybody who has given up hope has believed a lie, and the lie is from the devil. So I want you to know today that the God of hope in your situation, whatever it might be, wants you to lighten up today. He wants to take it, and he wants you to take from him. And when you take from him, that load becomes so light that you have the joy that you need to have every day. Let's finish up. Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace. Here it is and believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. That you and I today, we may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. I have to deal with a lot of bad things, a lot of really difficult situations, you know that. Whether it's tragedy in a hospital, it's a funeral, whatever it might be. And if all I could ever do was give them hope right here, I would feel like a failure. I would feel like I've let them down. May the God of hope, may the God of hope be with you where you will abound in joy by the power of the Holy Spirit. What's going on there? It's something that's supernatural. It's something that's out of this world. So here's what I will close with. I want you to begin to look at your life. As I've had to go to several of you in this congregation, I've stood with you and, and had to have the services of, of family members. Some of you I've had to have the services of your kids. Some of you I've had to have the services of things I can't explain. And as we stand in the funeral home and we pray, we pray with an eternal perspective. What I want you to know today, the reason that you have hope, the God of hope that can lighten your load today is because you know that our life, our life is a vapor. A thousand years is like a day with Christ. A day with Christ is like a thousand years. I want you to know today. I want you to see Jesus. I want you to see heaven. I want you to see in a perspective of all eternity when it comes to your life and my life. And when you do, it might still hurt what you've been through. But you have hope. And God takes that load and those loved ones that are in heaven and those tragedies and those situations you don't understand, you know that you know without a doubt that you're going to see them again someday through the blood of Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary, through his death, through his resurrection. And if Jesus can do that, and we know without a doubt that through his blood, his shed blood, that we will see our loved ones again someday, you mean to tell me that we can't believe the problem that you face today, that he can take it from you and lighten your load and you can have joy tomorrow? Yes, he can. I want you to know today, I want you to leave this place with whatever it is and you've been dealing with it for a long time. I want you to know in a matter of a second, the Lord can turn it around. And if you're still in the middle of it, I want you to see Jesus. Because he's the God of all hope. And when you see him in the midst of what you're going through, it is unbelievable what you, what you won't miss today. I don't want you to miss today the joy of the Lord. Because the joy of the Lord is your strength. And when you can praise him, 
And you can say, Lord, I know you got this. I don't understand it, but I know, I know that I know that you're going to work it out because I am your child and you have not done this to me. This is of the pit of hell. This is of the devil. He's lied to me again and again, but I'm not going to believe the lie. I'm going to see you. I'm going to rest in you and I'm going to have the joy that you want me to have. And even if I don't get an answer in this life, I know one day in heaven, it'll be worth it all. That's the way he wants us to live. Let's pray. Let's bow our heads today. What's the weight? What's the pressure? What is it? What is it? Is it a person? Is it your past? Is it your finances? What's weighing you down that that just clogs your thoughts? The devil sucked the joy out of your life. And you're missing, you're missing that laughter that you used to have. You're you're missing that joy that you used to have. And it's come along so slow, you don't realize how heavy it is and what you're carrying. Will you today, as Jesus said, will you just go to him? I I mean, right now, as a believer, just say, Jesus, I'm going to bring this to you right now. I don't understand it. It's heavy. Please, Lord, take it from me. And a God of hope that we continue to live by and know who he is, if you are willing, as we closed with today, if you are willing to believe that he will take that situation or person in your life, maybe it's you, he'll fix it. And he'll do it in a way that is same with me. You will be in awe of what he's done. So don't miss the process. Don't miss today. Don't let your life fly by because it does already. I want you to enjoy today. Give your burdens. Give whatever it is right now to Jesus and say, Jesus, take it from me. And he says, I'll, I'll not only take it from you, but what I give to you, will be light because it will be joy. I want you to do that today. Father, as we come to you, if there is someone here that that doesn't have the hope that I've talked about today of eternal life in heaven through your blood, Jesus, let them know whatever they're carrying, the burdens in this life, Lord, you want to lighten it from them. You want to give them life and life more abundantly. So Jesus, as I close the day, as we always do every week, if there's someone here, may a friend bring a friend, may a family member bring a family member, and I will pray with them, Lord, if they don't know you, and Jesus, you will accept them into your family through your blood that you shed for us on the cross of Calvary. You rose three days later, and we live by that resurrection power, Lord. We're going to see you again someday. So, Lord, if there's someone here today, now, or even after the service, Lord, as we sing this invitation song, we invite anyone to come that doesn't know you. And I can pray with them, and you will give them eternal life in heaven. And you will take all their sin. You'll take all their problems. And, Lord, you will give them unspeakable joy. In Jesus' name, amen. We stand with